When we introduced collision theory, which led to a model for reaction behavior based on the kinetic energy of collisions driving the system over a reaction barrier, we were specifically discussing gas phase reactions. In gas phase collisions, accounting for the amount of energy a given collision has available is relatively straightforward. But in the solution phase, the picture is quite different. This is a molecular dynamic simulation of water, showing hydrogen bonds appearing and disappearing as dotted lines. And you can even see, occasionally, the breaking of a covalent bond to form hydroxide and hydrogen ions. You can even see the vibrations of each individual molecule as the bond lengths and angles bounce around like the hydrogens are attached to springs. Notice how all of the molecules are constantly jostling their neighbors, exchanging energy with each other all the time. While in the gas phase, we could treat collisions as individual discrete events, in the liquid phase, collisions are happening constantly. Now imagine solute molecules immersed in this liquid medium. They're going to follow convoluted paths. Sometimes they will encounter each other, but the process is quite different from what we imagined in the gas phase. We can model the behavior with a kinetic mechanism. In the first step, two reactants diffuse together and form an encounter pair, which is held together for a time by a solvent cage. This encounter pair can then do one of two things. It can diffuse apart again, or it can react to form products. The first two steps of this mechanism are reverses of each other, so they form a dynamic equilibrium. And these processes tend to be quite fast, so often the last step is the rate determining step. Typically, the encounter pair will bounce around many times before diffusing apart, so even if the reactants don't originally encounter each other in the correct orientation, they may very well reorient into the correct orientation for the reaction to happen before they separate. Also, with all of these collisions these reacting molecules are having with their neighboring solvent molecules, their energies will be constantly changing. So at some point, the encounter pair will probably acquire enough energy for the reaction to happen. The only question is how quickly it does this as compared to the rate at which the encounter pairs diffuse apart. So let's analyze this mechanism. We can write the rate laws for each individual step. The last step is the one that forms products, so that will be our overall rate. We said that the first two steps usually form a dynamic equilibrium, so those rates should be equal. We can solve this equation for the concentration of our intermediate, the encounter pair. And we can plug this concentration into our overall rate to get the resulting rate law. Let's think about this result for a moment. The overall reaction we have looks bimolecular, if it were an elementary step. And when we analyze the mechanism that is really going on, we get a rate law that is first order in each reactant, just as if it were bimolecular. This means that with one exception, we don't even need to worry about this whole diffusion, equilibrium, solvent, cage, and counter pair thing. We can just treat each step using the same math as if these were gas phase reactions. What is that one exception? When the third step, the reaction of the encounter pair leading to products, is very fast compared to the diffusional rates. In this case, the second step doesn't even happen. Every encounter pair formed automatically goes directly to products. This means that the first step, the diffusion of the reactants together, is rate limiting, and therefore determines the overall rate. Notice that this rate doesn't depend on Kr at all. It only depends on how rapidly the reactants diffuse together, which more than anything else is a function of the solvent, not the reactants. This case is called diffusion limited and determines the fastest bimolecular reaction that can happen in solution. In water at room temperature, Kd is typically in the 10 to the 9th to 10 to the 10th per molar per second range. Fast as that is, there are certainly quite a few reactions that bump up against that limit. But notice that even here, the reaction can still be treated as a bimolecular elementary reaction, because the rate law has the right form. The upshot of all of this is that despite everything we originally developed for collision theory seeming to be inapplicable to solution phase chemistry, it actually is all directly applicable, and we only rarely even need to consider diffusion rates, solvent cages, and encounter pairs.